So these days, not a lot of options for live poker, right? Well, that just changed last week, actually. There's this place, which is obviously not too close to where I'm at, but there's also another option, which is only about an hour and a half away from here. That sounds a lot more doable. So welcome back to each and every one of you. I hope everyone out there is doing okay. It's been a little bit since we last spoke, but it looks like the hiatus might be over with poker rooms and casinos starting to open back up all over the country. From what I've gathered, Vegas is opening the first week of June. Talking Stick in Arizona is opening this Monday and the local California card rooms are still undecided. What that means for this channel is it looks like we're back to business. I might have to do a little bit of traveling to get new material, but as you guys know, that's never been a problem for me. In fact, it's something I rather enjoy. So for the next few vlogs, it looks like I'll be doing some traveling, but as long as the trusty Accord can get me there, I'm happy to do that. Talking Stick in Arizona is one of my favorite places to play. So I'm happy to hopefully visit this place again in the near future. The Venetian is opening June 5th or so they've announced and that includes poker. So I'll be driving over there and hopefully getting in a session or two for the vlog. Nothing is set in stone, but those are the spots that I'm kind of turning over in my head. If you guys are interested in some of those vlogs, make sure to hit subscribe and stay tuned because I'm happy to be back making content for everyone out there who enjoys these live poker vlogs. As far as this one in particular, as you guys already saw, Hamul in San Diego. They were one of the first poker rooms to open in the country and it seems like they haven't actually changed much. The only changes I noticed were that you have to wear a face mask the entire time you're in the casino and you also can't order food at the poker table. But besides that, I didn't really notice many differences. I know some casinos in the East Coast have this glass all around their poker tables. And I've also heard that a lot of poker rooms around the country are planning on opening back up six-handed or even four-handed. But Hamul was the standard issue nine-handed poker tables that we're all used to, which was a bit surprising to be completely honest. Without any further ado, let's jump into some poker hands because as we all know, we've been waiting long enough. Alright, so we are underway here at Hamul Casino. As you can see, the buy-in for this game is a maximum of $1,000, so that's what I decided to buy in for. And pretty early on, I get dealt pocket tens first to act. I open it up to $20, and the action folds all the way to the big blind, who puts in a raise to 90. With around 200 big blinds each, there's nothing to do here but make the call and play in position, I think, so that's what I decide to do and we go heads up to a flop of jack seven six. He continues for a bet of $100. Not ready to let these pocket tents go just yet as he could still have over cards like ace king and ace queen. So I continue and we see a five of diamonds on the turn. This time he sizes up to $300 and now I'm pretty much done with the hand so I fold. One orbit later, I get ace queen from the same position, open it up to $20, and once again it folds to the big blind, but this time he decides to just make the call. The flop comes down ace nine six with two clubs, he checks, I bet $25, and he makes the call. 
Turn card is a six of spades. He checks it one more time, and I think this is a card that you can mostly bet, but sometimes check on against aggressive opponents who are gonna bluff the river. I like checking just to kind of lay the trap, so that's what I decided to do this time, since the big blind in the hand was by far the most active player at the table. The river rolls off the eight of spades, which shouldn't really change too much, I think. Except he bets $250 into a pot that's not even 100. Even though I was expecting my opponent to bluff pretty often on this river card, against this sizing, I don't feel so great about it anymore. Even though he could be bluffing, he could also just be betting a bunch of money to make it look like a bluff, and then kind of like reverse trick me into calling with an ace. So after thinking for a bit, I kind of just scratch my head and decide to fold. Later on, there's an under the gun open to $20, and then two players make the call before the action gets to me in late position with King Jack. With this exact holding, I think heads up against the under the gun player, I just prefer a fold, but since there's two more callers out there, there's a little more incentive to turn it into a three bet bluff, which is what I decided to do this time, take the high variance route and raise it up to 125. With these offsuit Broadway hands, it's usually a good idea to just three bet or fold in my opinion. Not always, but for the most part, they're just gonna play not great after the flop, and they have good removal to like strong hands, like big pairs and ace king, whatever. So I just decide to raise it up. The action gets back to under the gun who makes it 250 now, and the action gets back to me. Obviously I know I'm crushed, way behind, but against this sizing and with plenty of money left, I think we each have over a thousand. I'm not really looking to go anywhere just yet. So I make the call. We go heads up to a flop of Jack seven, six rainbow. It's one of those spots where you're not gonna be thrilled about flopping top pair, especially when your opponent continues betting to the tune of $225. Once again, I'm not looking to let it go just yet. I make the call and we see a turn card, which is the five of clubs. At this point, my opponent only has around $600 behind. He sticks all of that in the middle and I just make the easy fold. It just so happens that my opponent in this hand is actually a buddy of mine that I've played with quite a few times and later on before heading out he told me he had pocket aces. He's a real stand-up guy so I definitely believe him. It's nice to see that after a few months off my instincts are as sharp as ever since I raise when other people have aces. Later on, it folds to the button who opens it up to $20, and I look down at ace-king offsuit from the small blind, definitely gonna be coming in for a raise here, so I make it $80. The big blind gets out of the way and the button makes the call. So heads up to a flop here, which comes down pretty amazing for our hand. It's ace-4-3. I bet $60 and my opponent makes the call. Turn cards, the 10 of diamonds, shouldn't really change anything except from us maybe losing to ace-10 now. But that seems pretty unlikely, so I'm just gonna keep betting for value. Normally in this spot, I'd advocate around like a half to two thirds pot size, but because we have a lot of money behind and also my opponent in this exact hand likes to splash around, I decide to size up and try to set up an all in by the river. I bet 275, but unfortunately my opponent folds right away, so it seems like one of those spots where he just didn't really have anything. After that hand, I get pretty much no playable cards for about an hour until finally I look down at pocket kings from under the gun. I open it to $20, there's a caller in late position and then the cutoff raises it to $90. Action folds back to me. I think my opponent in this hand has around $800, so I'm definitely gonna be putting in the re-raise. It's a bit worrisome that I'm getting raised by this opponent because number one, my image is really tight at this point since I haven't played in a while. And number two, my opponent in this hand is a fairly tight opponent. So I could be up against pocket aces sometimes in this exact setup, but really nothing we can do about that for around one to 200 big blinds. I'm not ever gonna be really folding pocket kings pre-flop. Long story short, when the action's on me, I raise it up again to 275. Action folds back to the cutoff who sticks in his $800. I make the easy call. The board comes jack high, which is a bit worrisome since now we only beat pocket queens and I guess ace king suited, which seems unlikely. I just flip over my hand though and by the end, it seems like we have the winner. So nice to scoop a big pot and do absolutely nothing special.
At this point, I play a bit of a crazy hand that I didn't manage to film, but I wanted to include in the vlog. Essentially what happened is there was an under the gun open to 15, a caller in the field, and I called in the big blind with king three of diamonds. The flop came queen eight six with two diamonds. I checked, the pre-flop raiser checks, and then the player in late position bets $20. I check raise to $75, not really looking to check call with king high. No showdown value, so I decided to take the aggressive route and play my flush draw with the initiative. The preflop raiser folds, and then the late position player does something pretty interesting and puts in a re-raise. I believe he made it $200. This is a really weird play. I can't think of any hands that should be doing this, but it's not uncommon that people click random buttons at 2-5 or even 5-10 for that matter. So I decide to just proceed with a call, getting pretty much direct odds and plenty of money left behind if I do make a flush. So I make the call and the turn card is an offsuit 9. I check it and this time he bets $300. I think this is where I make a mistake in the hand and decide to just call and I don't really like it, to be honest. My thoughts were if a straightening card comes at the end, like a 10 or a jack, I can easily represent a straight since my opponent should never really have one after three betting the flop. Again, seems like wishful thinking, but that's what I decided to do. The river is one of those cards. It's an offsuit 10, so I don't make the flush, but I do make what I believe in my head could easily be represented as a straight. So I shove all in and my opponent snap calls with queen jack of diamonds. So I bluff right into the nuts pretty much. Seems like a super weird hand for him to three bet on the flop, but long story short, I lose a bunch of money in this hand and add on to my stack. Shortly after that hand, there's an under the gun open to $20 and I look down at 5-4 of clubs from middle position. I decide to raise it to $70 and only the under the gun player makes the call. Heads up to a flop of ace, ace, deuce with two clubs. He checks it. I think you can go either way here. I decide to check back this time. Turns an offsuit seven, shouldn't really change much. He checks for a second time, and this time I put in a small bet to the tune of $50, much like I would do with all my over pairs that aren't an ace. And obviously trip aces would probably bet the flop, but sometimes check back for balance. My opponent disagrees with everything I just said though, because he raises it to 145. I make the call here, getting pretty decent odds to draw to a straight and a flush. River is the queen of diamonds, however. He checks it, and there's no way I'm gonna bluff into what I'm 99% sure is trip aces. So I decide to just check back and surrender this one. And sure enough, my opponent shows ace five of diamonds. So the session isn't going great, but I get dealt pocket jacks on the button. Uh, I guess that could actually make things worse. I don't really know. It depends how you view this hand. I kind of like it. Anyway, everyone folds to me and I make it $20. The small blind makes the call, which I thought was kind of odd. And then the big blind also makes the call. So we go three ways to a flop of ace, jack, 10 with two hearts. Oh yeah, finally making hands now. Action checks to me. I put in a bet of $20, begging for some action. The small blind folds and then the big blind starts thinking for a bit before deciding on a call. All right. Turn comes the eight of hearts, which seems like a pretty miserable card to me. Queen nine now makes a straight, and all his flush draws have obviously gotten there. He checks it to me, and this, I think, is gonna be one of the few cards that I check back, because even though I'm likely to still have the best hand sometimes, it would be a pretty shitty spot to get check raised. So I just check it back, and if I was behind on the turn, the river comes to save the day, because it's the ace of clubs. He checks it to me for a third time though, which isn't great. I was hoping he'd bet with like a flush or trip aces or something. So now it doesn't really seem like my opponent has much. And even though I'd like to bet around $2,000 right now, I have to size accordingly to what I think he has. So I put in a bet of $50. The big blind thinks for a really long time and eventually size and makes the call. I know at this point my hand is good, and sure enough, he mucks. So it seems like we got called pretty light there, but hey, can't complain about making a full house. A little while later, we're five-handed at this point. The under the gun player on my left makes it $20. The small blind makes the call, and I look down at king 10 off suit in the big blind. I decide to take the high variance line and put in a three bet. The under the gun player had been opening quite a bit, so he doesn't necessarily have to have a strong range. And the small blind caller is out of position to me, so that seems good enough for me. I raise it to $110, the under the gun player folds, and the small blind makes the call. 
Flop comes 4-4 four, four deuce, rainbow. He checks, I bet $75 and he makes the call. Turn card is the queen of diamonds. He checks it and it seems like a good card to keep betting to me. So that's what I do this time to the tune of $200. And this time he does fire his cards right into the muck. In the last hand of the night, I straddle under the gun to $10. There's a few limpers in the field and then the small blind raises it to $60. Big blind folds and the action's back on me with ace nine off suit. I'm just gonna be honest here, the worst of the three options is a call and that's exactly what I decided to do. Maybe just a bit of frustration seeping in from the session not going great. Maybe forcing the action too much to get hands on the vlog. However, just to be clear, this is not a great play. This hand should just be used as a three bet bluff simply for the removal of the ace factor or just mostly fold because it's a pretty terrible hand. And if I call here and some of the limpers call, I'm gonna be playing in between a bunch of players, which is never ideal. Long story short, I decided to call and it's actually a best case scenario because all of the limpers fold. So we go heads up to a flop and I'm in position. The board comes out six, five deuce with two hearts. I do have the ace of hearts. My opponent continues for a bet of $90 this time. I decide to make the call here for two reasons. Number one, the board texture seems like there's a lot of turn cards in which I can make over pairs fold. And number two, if my opponent does have better ace highs, it's gonna be pretty easy to win this pot on the turn or river. So I decide to make the call and we see a five of clubs on the turn. He checks it this time, which is good news for me. I take it as the green light to start trying to bluff this pot away from my opponent, so I bet 150. No need to go too big here because I'm pretty sure against this opponent it's gonna take two bets. So my plan is to go relatively small on the turn and then pretty large on the river. Not too surprisingly, he does make the call, so it's a bit easier to narrow him down to over pairs now than ace-king, ace-queen type holdings. Again though, I'm not too worried about it because on the right river cards, it's gonna be really hard to hang on with a hand like pocket tens, pocket jacks, pocket queens, or really any over pair. And there is the backup plan of rivering an ace, which will often be the best hand at this point. However, the river does not come in ace, but it is still a pretty good card, I think. It's the seven of hearts. So some straights get there now, the front door flush gets there, and pocket sevens improves to pretty much the nuts. When he checks it to me, this is definitely one of those cards that I'm gonna stick to the plan on. He has around $700 now, which is great because I wanted the river bet to be a little more than a pot size shove. So when he checks it to me here on this river, it's time to finish what I started and just hope for the best. I think it's a good spot to go for it. So that's what I do, all in for his last $700. My opponent starts thinking for a while and he decides on a call. So that's gonna be some bad news. I let him know any pair is good and sure enough, he flips over pocket jacks. <sighs> so this hand was pretty frustrating, honestly. Not because I hated the play. In fact, I actually do like the play after the flop, but pre-flop, it's a bit of a blunder, honestly. And if I had just played correctly on that street, I never would have got myself into this somewhat tough spot on the river. Anyway, that was a wrap for the session. I decided after this hand to just call it a night and stop the bleeding. Things weren't really going my way and I wasn't in the best mental state. I don't really like continuing to play if I'm not feeling 100% in my mind. So I racked up with around 400 bucks and decided to take the L. Hope you guys enjoyed. Right, so not exactly the warm welcome I had in mind, but as you guys know by now, live poker is unpredictable and you know we're not always in control of the results. Which, speaking of, here they are in all their glory. Uh, feast your eyes, take it all in. For everyone who says I only post wins, this is not a win, that is a fat L and a big kick to the ball. More importantly, I was able to get some new footage for the channel. If you guys are anything like me, you've been a bit bored with the lack of content coming out on YouTube lately, at least as far as poker goes. So hopefully this sort of fixes that at least a little bit. As always, thank you guys for all the support. Thank you for watching. 
and hopefully I see you at a poker room real soon. Peace.